Seeing that we have a quorum in attendance, I'm calling this November 12th meeting of the Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at 5.01. Um, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee. Now I'm going to call all the committee members by name to confirm you can hear me and we can hear you. Alyssa Brewer. Present. Darcy Dumont, present. Dorothy Pam. Present. Evan Ross. Present. George Ryan. I'm here. Okay. Those assisting the meeting will be monitoring committee members' connections and if necessary, we'll pause the meeting until you're reconnected. Um, okay. Uh, does appear that there is one attendee. Um, Art, if you would like to give public comment, uh, raise your hand. Does not look like he wants to give public comment. Okay. So we just have one piece of business today, which is town manager appointment um, of one additional person to the community um, safety working group. So Paul, would you like to introduce that? Sure, so there's one more name that we're adding. I'm, I'm moving forward to the town council at this point in time. Uh, thus for Russ Vernon Jones. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones has been served, has served as principal at the Fort River School for a number of years, has been a leader in racial justice um, conversations and uh, work throughout the community um, and has and among a, a number of other things he's well known in the community uh, the interview team interviewed him and felt that he would be a strong addition to the uh, existing working group questions anyone I think uh, probably quite a few of us are familiar with Russ Vernon Jones um, and his work in town on racial equity and so on. Um, so, um, I see two Dorothy? hands raised. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not even looking. <laughs> um, Dorothy. It, well, I, I applaud uh, his uh, credentials. And my question is to uh, Mr. Bachelman. Are there more committee members, proposed, proposed committee members coming our way or is this it? At this time, this is it. Um, so yeah. Good, thank you. Um, Evan? Yeah, so one of my questions was I think, I think similar to Dorothy's, which was, are we gonna be having meetings to consider one additional candidate each time we add? Cause I believe we have two more um, seats to fill and I'm hoping that we don't have another meeting with just one candidate. Um, I guess my, my second question, um, which I'm not quite sure how to ask. So this is a, a unique committee because it has a racial diversity requirement. Um, at least six of the members have to be BIPOC. Um, in your previous memo, you stated um, how the candidates had self-identified racially on their community activity forms. Uh, you did not do this in, for this one. I, I know Russ, and so I can make an assumption about his race. But I guess I was curious, in the last memo, one person chose not to self-identify. And so I guess I'm curious, when we, this is a more complicated question, but when we say six people have to be BIPOC, does that mean on the CAF? they have to self-identify as BIPOC, or if there is someone who did not answer that question, I, I think you're, you're getting what I'm getting at here, which is we have five people who have self-identified as BIPOC based on the last memo, one person who didn't self-identify, and in this one, you didn't tell us. And so I'm, I'm curious to, hear, to know how, how you're viewing how we actually meet that requirement and how much is self-identification. It's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that question. I can tell you that um, we've met the threshold of the requirement of the charge that six members, I believe are BIPOC members. Um, what was, and uh, one did not identify, self-identify. 
but that's all, that's what I put in my memo, but I'm confident that we've met the threshold of six members being BIPOC community members. Any other, uh, Dorothy, you have your hand up? Yes, yes. When I did see the self-identify, my first thought the other day was Rachel Dolezal, and who I do not denigrate, by the way. I think people can self-identify um, as one thing or another. And I think that we don't want to get into 23andMe um, you know, DNA because people's DNA and their sense of who they are do not always match. But um, I, I'm agreeing with Evan that if there's a system, then either if people have to be identified, which used to be in very bad taste, but now it's in good taste, if people have to be identified, I think there has to be a consistent system. Because what we what we ended up with was white was the default, which is, you know, a topic. So I understand the difficulty in your position. I think people have to be told that that the requirements of where we are now, or at least some committees, require a consistent system. Okay, uh, thank you, Dorothy. Alyssa. So just reflecting again on the unique nature of this committee, I think that what this means is much like many of the conversations the previous OCA and now TSO has had with Paul about what we want in memos and what would be more helpful to us in terms of this. I think it was arguably, I assumed it was an oversight because it wasn't something we normally would do when it comes to Russ Vernon Jones. I think given the nature of this committee, I think that it would have been made sense in the memo, in this most recent memo to say how that person self-identified or if they didn't. And then in the case of both the previous memo and this memo, when a person doesn't self-identify, which no one's required to do anything accurately on their CAF, or we'd have to throw some CAFs out because some people don't answer like the question if they live in Amherst or not accurately, um, is that I think given the nature of this committee, as opposed to every other committee, if we aren't going to start expecting this to be part of every single memo to us, which I believe we are not, except in isolated cases like this, where the charge clearly identifies, I think the charge must have surely been, of course, used during the interview process. So the charge clearly stated that it, there needed to be six. Therefore, the interview team should have stated whether or not they had six because that's the requirement. And so I understand what Paul just said, but I think that it could easily have been that given the person did not self-identify on the previous memo that Paul could have written, did not self-identify on the CAF, but during the interview identified as, because if that's not true, then right, we're kind of in a nowheresville kind of way. And I think it's entirely appropriate for this limited circumstance where we have said in the charge, you have to fulfill these requirements. You can't just allege that you fulfilled the requirements. You have to have people either self-identify or follow up with them and say, I know you didn't fill this space out, but you see how the charge here says six, can we count you? And, and then that's up to the person. And if the person doesn't want to be counted, then that's fine. But it should be an active question because you shouldn't sit there and say, I know this person, I can guess. Well, that, that's exactly the wrong thing to do. And so this is a hindsight sort of thing rather than knowing it going in. But if, for example, there's another committee in the future, which we, I think we all expect there to be at least one of that grows out of a recommendation from the Community Safety Working Group that might very well also have some standards like this, then I would think that at that time, we'd reflect back to this conversation and say, it needs to be clear, the person needs to choose at the interview time. They don't have to, if they don't do it on the CAF, whatever, but they need to just choose at the interview time so that the people making the recommendations know whether or not they've accurately met the requirement. Future reference. Do you have any response to that, Paul? Yeah, so I can, you know, that was an over, clearly an oversight of my part in not including the self-identification of this, the one that the Mr. Vernon Jones that you're re referring to. I can re I can revise that memo in anticipation in, in advance of the town council meeting on Monday, um, and um, 
I would never substitute my judgment for what someone has self-identified. So, but uh, we can reach out to the person uh, who did not self-identify and either, neither through our process and um, find out if, how they self-identify if they're willing to share that. Thank you. Um, and I would just also add that I, I agree with Evan that um, I was a little surprised that we were only looking at one person tonight. Um, and because they, you know, because we had the impression yeah. from you, Paul, that yes. there were several people that you were interviewing and that you thought we were going to get a few names. Um, so, yeah. Uh, in the future, we might not have a special meeting for one person. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand <laughs> that. And I appreciate the time everybody carved out of their day for this brief meeting. Um, but and I also had, I emailed Paul earlier today because I was uh, somewhat horrified that there was a person who contacted the whole town council that she hadn't been notified. Um, so, and Paul said that it was because there was, you know, some people that might have still been under consideration or anyway, if you want to add any more to that, Paul. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's an act, it's an active pool. So um, as we continue to move forward, um, I rely on the interview team to say who, who we want to move forward with. So, and I'll, you know, the ones I have started to contact them, but Dr. Pierce, Pierce, I did not contact. So if, since we have, the names of these people are now public, um, I guess if you were a person who had an interview and you haven't been notified, you would just kind of assume that you were still under consideration if you hadn't heard because otherwise you would want to contact people if you had made an affirmative or a negative decision about a particular person, right? Right. So I wouldn't make any assumptions right this moment, honestly, if I were, in, if I were watching this right now. So. Yeah, it just seems, seems odd to have the names public without notifying the people who've had interviews. Yeah. But, um, okay, well, I don't see any other um, comments or questions, or do I? Yes, Alyssa. Yes, so since we went down that road, I have one request, which is that we not mention that individual by name. I thought Darcy was very careful to not do that. And um, I think we should continue not doing that because again, we don't publish a list or anything. I know that's a long conversation we've had before, but since we don't publish a list, it feels uncomfortable to mention a particular email that we received. And I hope we won't be doing that at the town council level. And I hope that town councilors won't do that as well. I agree that this is an unusual situation, but I also disagree with the decision not to tell people that they were not being brought forward at this time. If this was something the town council was doing rather than the town manager doing, like if this was a planning board or ZBA appointment, I would fight tooth and nail that we would tell people you are not being brought forward at this time, but of course we are going to consider you for future possibilities. At this time, just because there are X number of seats on the body doesn't mean we're ever going to fill those seats. So rather than, I appreciate not wanting to come back for another and another, there, no, there might not be any more people appointed and that's okay. We don't have to fill all the seats, especially because we've fulfilled the mandate of the um, people of color that we specifically ensured were on there. And sometimes a group gels in a particular way and that's okay. One doesn't need to fill X number of seats just to have them filled. But given the awkwardness of this particular situation, I think that it does not make sense to not advise people that in fact, several names are being brought forward and yours is not yet one of them. And we do not know, we do not at this time. The reality is you're not appointing the person. They didn't get appointed last week. They're not getting appointed this week. Will they get appointed a month from now or six months from now? Entirely possible because you always go back to people who have applied before. But I think it 
was on it was a mistake to not tell people whose names were not being brought forward in public what their status was and i think it's unfair to them for them to wonder will they bring me forward <laughs> next week two weeks from now or never i i just it feels disrespectful dorothy i just want to state that this committee is not being run by paul these appointments are being made by a committee. And so we are trying to make ourselves follow better rules. We know in the past, this has been a complaint that people would sign up for a committee and you know, time would go by and nobody would know what was happening. And that we were trying to work on this to not do that, but he is not running the committee. So when you have a committee that has power, then sometimes it does things the way you like and sometimes it doesn't. This is, this is a committee of the town manager, Dorothy. This he is, is not making these appointments, is he? I thought he had a committee. He, a, he appointed a committee to make the appointments. Isn't that you it? To advise him. They're his appointments. That's like saying that when he has a search committee for a staff position, that the search committee picked the person, not him. That's ridiculous. Yeah, That's maybe not how it works. One level below. Um, is this the committee that's going to choose the committee? Or is this... Didn't we already choose a committee that was choosing people? And isn't this somebody that was chosen? Or am I, am I a, a step out of step here? Do you want to explain that, Paul? Sure, thank you. Um, so these are town manager appointments. Uh, okay. To achieve the town manager appointments, I, viewed it, I, I appointed an interview team that you saw the names on That's, the interview yeah. team. Right. And they have done the interviewing with, with myself uh, present as well. So I'm part of all the interviews, but they are the interview team. And then they give me a, the, their recommendations. And then I move forward with the, recommend, with the recommendations I agree with to you. So it's his I, recommendation for a town manager well, com committee. I guess that's not really how I thought it was sold. I thought it was sold that this was, as this committee was playing a large role in doing this. It does. All right. So that what I mean is it's not quite like it is sometimes that's all uh, it's not unless it's totally like your small advisory committees that you change for every committee uh, I thought this was more input from a group of persons that they had a stronger role than in some of the other committees well it's a, it's a different I think you talked about this at your last meeting yeah this is a different process than a normal appointment this is a unique interview team that is very uh, engaged in the interview process and we have very um, important conversations after the interviews and then move forward after that. So I you think are, have, you do play a major role in those conversations. So absolutely. it isn't, it isn't. Okay, I got it. All right, I think that's the end of the comments. Um, if we don't have any more questions or comments, I'm just going to make the motion. Um, I move to recommend that the town council approve uh, the following recommendation by the town manager of a person to serve on the community safety working group for a term that lasts the length of the working group's efforts. Russ Vernon Jones, do I have a second? Second. Okay, any more discussion? Uh, roll call vote, Alyssa. Yes. Dorothy, yes. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Okay, that is passed unanimously. I will forward it to the town council for the meeting on Monday. Um, okay, so um, that this is pretty much it. We're not going to do anything else tonight. We don't have any minutes. We don't have any discussion of anything. So uh, <laughs> unless someone else has a comment or whether I, we do have a public comment listed again at the end of the meeting, and just in case, let's just check and see if Art will wait for you one more time to see if you want to add any public comment. All right, so we are scheduled to meet again next Thursday at 4.30, 4.30 to 6.30, because we have our 
um, public um, forum on the budget at 6.30. So um, that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Bye-bye.